I think if you're just showing silent movies with whatever soundtrack came with them, I don't think you get near the crowd. The theater organ was designed basically for the accompaniment of silent films. There was a need for this kind of an instrument because church organs are a different breed completely. You can't play the kind of music you need for a silent film on a typical church organ. And the need for it arose back in the early 1900s. And you had a man by the name of Robert Hope Jones who came over from England and was a very, very talented inventor and laid out the principles of what is called Hope Jones Unit Orchestra, where one person could simulate an orchestra, making it easier and more financially lucrative for a theater, especially a smaller theater, that could not afford an orchestra to have one of these things and, you know, have it do everything you needed it to do for silent film. Wurlitzer did build the largest number of these instruments. They turned out 2,340 instruments in all. During the heyday, three or four years, they were turning out one organ a day in the factory. The installation here at the Weinberg Center is the 1400th and so forth organ built by the factory. This was shipped from the factory October 28, 1926. These instruments were basically what they called stock instruments. Uh, and that is that when a theater chain would order an organ, they sometimes would order five or six organs for, at a time. So they had different model numbers. This one happened to be a style 190 special, uh, which meant it had eight sets of pipes totaling 552 pipes and the percussions. They designated it as a special because it was installed on two sides of the theater, not on just one side. Uh, on it. So there are four sets of pipes in each one of these rooms. This was known and opened in 1926 as Crandall's Tivoli Theater. It remains so until the mid-30s when the Warner Brothers came in. They ran the thing for a while and then sold it to the Weinberg family. Mr. Weinberg had a personal interest in the organ. Uh, when it came time to completely rebuild it, which we did in 1970, and it was later rebuilt by another crew of people around in the late 80s, uh, he funded the project basically and wanted to see the organ stay. We had a huge storm come through here and what happened was everything overflowed, the water burst the doors down here in the bottom basement, flooded the entire theater up to within I would say about three feet of where the maroon color there uh, starts and marble ends. That's how this theater was completely underwater, they're underwater up through the lobby. And of course, the original organ console, which is the key desk, which I'm sitting at, was totally destroyed. Uh, of course, it was down in the pit, it was completely flooded out. We came in here two weeks later with Coleman lanterns, and the console was had floated up on the stage and was on its back, and just totally ruined. But the pipes and everything were not damaged. No water got into the organ chambers. So if that had happened, then you might as well have just junked the whole thing, because they do have to be maintained. And when they went into a state of disrepair, there was nobody around to keep them in repair. So therefore, they were considered idle junk. And that's why so many of them are gone now. And the Weinberg family decided that since the building was structurally sound, they would donate it to the city if they would turn it into a performing arts center, which ultimately happened. We probably have less than half of the total silent film output of Hollywood available to us today because those films were made on cellulose nitrate, which was the equivalent of gunpowder. It was highly explosive 
and they had scores, or what they called cue sheets, that were written for the conductor or the pianist or organist, and all the titles were there, and they would have suggestions on music to use. Okay, well, at the end of the silent era, so much of that stuff was literally taken out on back lots and set on fire and just burned. I mean, the studios did not foresee the, you know, the use for this stuff again. So I have to improvise and just create these scores in many, you know, in most occasions because I don't have any music available to me. That's just an improvised march. Never heard it before. You'll never hear it again. <laughs>